Today we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the popular aircraft uh, carbon monoxide detectors. Price ranging from $15 all the way up to $1200. Stay tuned. If you're a pilot, you're already aware of the dangers of carbon monoxide buildup in the cockpit. A few years ago, a Comanche pilot lost consciousness in mid-flight and landed in a hayfield in Missouri after running out of fuel. He miraculously survived the crash. He later found out that he was succumbed to carbon monoxide poisoning and simply went to sleep. They eventually found out the culprit for high carbon monoxide in cockpit being the cracked muffler. I came to realization of CO poisoning about three years ago and decided to purchase a CO monitor. I made a video comparing three different CO monitors and eventually settled on one of them. You can check out that video in the links below. A few months later, my CO monitor started beeping and we found out we had a crack in the exhaust. So this is the CO monitor that I've been using, but this is kind of reaching its end of its lifespan. So I'm in the market for another CO monitor. What I'm looking for is how fast they can detect at CO levels, which one of them would actually grab my attention in case there is a high levels of CO, and also looking at the ease of the use and also the price. The first one that we'll be looking at is actually designed for home use, not necessarily a cockpit use, but this is a fairly small unit and it's cheap. It's about under $15. The set point for this unit is 30 parts per million. At 50 parts per million, it might alert you between 60 and 90 minutes. I think that's a very large time. So I don't necessarily think this is very ideal for cockpit, especially if it is going to alert me 60 to 90 minutes. Next one we'll be looking at is this forensic detector. This is the version 2.0 of the detector. So this device has audio and visual alerts and the low set point for this device is nine parts per million. So that's when it start alerting. The high set point is about 25 parts per million. The sensor life is about three years. Next up is the SensorCon AV8 Inspector. So this is a fairly rugged device. Okay, let me read some of the specs. So the battery life for this device is about two years. Uh, the low set point, alarm set point is 35 parts per million. High alarm set point is 200 parts per million. So this device cost about $164. Okay, so the next one is not necessarily a carbon monoxide detector in itself. This is a Sentry Plus. This, if you know anything about Sentry, this is an ADSB device. Primarily works with four flight. I don't think it works with any other EFBs. So this Sentry Plus has a carbon monoxide sensor built in it, which I thought was very interesting because I currently use Garmin GDL52 for my ADSB and I was curious as to if this can replace my CO monitor and an ADSB device because I use four flight anyways. Okay, some of the specs, the sensor life is 10 years, which is pretty cool. So it has three different alerting colors, green being everything normal. So when we say green, so that is less than 75 ppm. Yellow means caution, 75 to 200 ppm. Red is over 200 pop parts per million. Cost of this device is $799. I believe it's only available on Sporties. So lastly, we have the Lightspeed Delta Zulu headset. Again, this is not in itself a carbon monoxide detector, but it has inbuilt carbon monoxide detector in it. According to Lightspeed website, the headset will tell you when it detects carbon monoxide levels. The low alert set point is uh, between 10 to 50 parts per million. The high set point is between 50 to 100 parts per million. So you can, I, you can adjust that alerting thresholds. The sensor life is 10 years. According to Lightspeed, you can send the headset back after 10 years to update the sensor for a nominal fee. Okay, the setup here is very simple. I have a box, supposedly an airtight box. I'm going to place all of the CO detectors that I'm going to be testing in here. And I'll be introducing the test gas. This is the CO Solo test gas. There is a small hole on this box, so where I'll be introducing the CO in it. So since this is a relatively smaller box, I cannot test all of my detectors at once. So for example, the headset, so since it is fairly large device, I will have to test this separately. So for Sentry, I'll be pairing that to my iPad and I'll be looking at for any alerts or anything like that that comes on the iPad. All right, let's get started. So here's my setup. I have the AV8, Forensics, and Sentry uh, home CO monitor device, which is blank. It's supposed to stay blank, I believe. Now I will be introducing the test gas in here. 
All right, I see aviator is picking up. It reached 44 ppm and starts beeping. Sentry still says normal. The home, little home thing started beeping too. So I'm gonna empty the entire container and see what happens. Surprisingly, surprisingly, the home device is being the loudest one. And the aviator seemed to have multiple alarms trying to grab attention. The little forensic device is not doing bad at all. But I'm careful surprised that um, sentry is still saying normal so I am not sure I don't see anything on the iPad either everything seems normal with sentry so that's kind of interesting so rest of them are showing some concentration although they were kind of all over the place the aviator is saying 207 forensics is saying 308 and the other, the home CO monitor device saying 425. So I don't know which one is accurate. So I don't exactly know the concentration to begin with. So, so this test not necessarily gonna tell you the accuracy, but it just kind of gives you an idea how these devices actually perform. A little disappointed by the AV8 because that sounds sounds to me is the kind of the weakest, and I'm totally disappointed by a Sentry because it's not really picking up anything. It's saying everything is good. Wow, the concentration is staying relatively consistent among the three devices, so which means. This container is more or less airtight. Okay, sounds like nothing has been changing. So I'm gonna let it run for a couple more minutes and see if uh, Sentry is gonna pick anything up. Okay, so I am going to release some CO. I'm in a well ventilated area, so it's not an issue. Okay, I got a battery low alert from Sentry. But that's not what I was looking for. I'm gonna take all of my devices out. I'm still gonna leave Sentry in here and see if it's gonna react. So now I'm gonna test my light speed Delta Zulu headset. So it's time to introduce my test gas in here. So adding everything I got. Okay, the app is picking up CO concentration. I'm gonna see if I can introduce more CO. It's about 100 parts per million here. Okay, I've introduced all the CO. Let's see if I can get 200 parts per million. Surprisingly, Sentry is still saying normal. I did not hear anything from the headset. It's possibly because it's inside the box and my camera is outside. Okay guys, we're still over 250 parts per million, nothing from Sentry. The cool thing about this app is you can kind of see the trend. Now my camera is inside the box. I'm going to try to introduce some more CO. Now the concentration has fallen to 239 ppm because I, I opened the lid. Now since I reintroduced CO, it started picking up again. It's 241. Alright, so that was our test. It's kind of interesting to compare it side by side and see how they behave. I am a little disappointed by Sentry. Before I tell you my thoughts, we need to talk about Sentry. It kind of bothered me that Sentry did not work at all toward my test. Also, towards the end of the test, I got a notification indicating a sensor fault. 
So I contacted Fortflight to see if they had any thoughts on the results. After a few back and forth emails, Fortflight basically said this. Oh, shout out to Fortflight there for their very prompt response. What this email is saying is that my test method is basically invalid. Either my test gas is not compatible for with this device or overall my test method is not valid at all. Which kind of did not make much sense to me, especially with the test gas thing, because carbon monoxide is a carbon monoxide no matter where the source come from. Finally, I shared my screenshot about the sensor. That's when they referred me to UAvionics, the manufacturer of Sentry. Shout out to UAvionics for trying to help me, give me answers. Again, we went multiple emails going back and forth. I even shared the video trying to explain what my test method is. Finally, UVA Avionics agreed to take, the, take my device back and test them and share the results with me. So I will keep you updated if and when get the results back from you avionics. There are only three possibilities here. One, I got a bad device. Two, like four flights said, my test gas is not valid. Three, there's a potential is issue with the device lineup itself. Before we talk about the results, keep in mind that this is not a scientific test. This is more of a demonstration of how these devices work when you're subjected to carbon monoxide. So therefore the concentrations that you saw on the devices were not exactly validated with the concentration of CO inside the box. Guys, I spent a lot of time making this video. Please support me by liking and sharing this video. Also support me by supporting Flying Ice Optics. Flying Ice makes amazing sunglasses specifically designed for pilots and motorcyclists. What I'm wearing is a Flying Ice prescription glasses with a magnetic attachment for sunglasses. So these can be easily converted from sunglasses back to prescription glasses. All right, let's get to the results. All right, here's this table summarizing my results. I divided my rankings into five different categories for two set of devices. One is a standalone CO device. Another is a multi-use device. Okay, here are the categories that I looked at. Audio alerts, visual or app alerts, construction, reaction time, and multi-use. As you can see from the table, for the standalone device, I have the Amazon Home Monitor, SensorCon, and Forensics. All right, my pick for the standalone category is Forensic version 2.0. It costs about $125, which is not bad at all. There is actually a 15% off coupon in there in the description below. So you might end up saving a little bit more. I did have a chance to fly with the device, and I have a couple of thoughts on that. I wish the alerting threshold was a little bit higher. The minimum alerting threshold in this case was 9 ppm. I wish it was a little bit higher, more like 35 ppm or something like that because the device started alerting me while on the ground. So it is not really uncommon uh, for CO levels to be around 10 to 15 parts per million on the ground. It is important to look at the CO concentrations while in cruise. Alternatively, you can turn the device off or not have the device on during your ground operations. Secondly, I wish, that I wish there was a buzzer or a vibrating alarm option within the device that would increase the chance of uh, getting a pilot's attention, especially if the pilot is wearing the device. Keep in mind that the sensor con and forensic devices are chemical based sensors. Every couple of years, you will probably have to send the device back to the factory to get the sensor refreshed. And at some point it might costing as much as the device itself. Honestly, you can pick both either of them, SensorCon or Forensics. They would do the job about the same level, but given the price, my preference would be to go with the Forensics. I would not consider buying the Amazon, the cheap Amazon home device, just because we don't know the reliability of the device. And also it is not really built for the cockpit use. When it comes to the multi-use category, my choice is the Delta Zulu headset. I love the functionality having the CO alerts through your headset, which is the best way to grab pilot's attention of high dangerous CO levels. Also, the Lightspeed app shows the trend of carbon monoxide, which is very useful if, if you're an aircraft owner, monitor for any kind of exhaust leaks or something like that. I would have picked Lightspeed Delta Zulu even if the Sentry had worked for me because one, the Sentry had a very high alerting threshold of 75 parts per million. If you look at OSHA, OSHA sets an alerting threshold of 50 parts per million. At 75, I would think it's very high. Also, Sentry is not a true continuous CO monitoring device. Yes, it will alert you when the concentration exceeds 75 parts per million. If you have a very small leak, you would not be able to detect it. This is speaking from my experience as an aircraft owner. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. I will keep you posted what I hear back from you avionics on this Sentry Plus. Have a good day.